Yeah, I think I'd like to be famous. As a kid, unabashedly was like, if I'm not famous, like, the world's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out. Um, keep it up. If you want to hear In Sync, all right, In Sync it is. Here we go. Karsh, maybe we should put the lampshades in the trailer just because I'm worried someone's going to think that's actual trash. That would be the most classic thing to happen to us. This coming in? Right. This no, no, that's trash. Right. That's disgusting trash. <laughs> <laughs> So this show in San Antonio is a little bit different from almost every other show that we are playing on this tour in that we are actually setting up and sound checking in a public place. We have to set up in front of our fans because it's just essentially a restaurant by day and concert venue by night. Some of our biggest fans knew that and they showed up during the afternoon and here we are in our pajamas on stage plugging in cables. We're big enough to have these super passionate fans that will show up 10 hours early to come watch us set up, but small enough that there could still be a scenario where they would have access to us in that way. It's all part of this interesting middle ground that we're in. It just makes you think a lot about fans and the concept of fame in general and the upsides and downsides of it. What does it mean to be famous? Are we at all famous already? And like, do we want to be? Okay guys, my snare drum's not in the trailer. Did anybody see it? It's pretty quick, right? I'm just gonna check everything in the van trailer again. I, I know you don't, I'm just like, I'm upset. In the trailer? We're missing our For all the foot fetishers out there. Can you beatbox? That's a no. Gravy, can you spit some fat beats? Alright, we're not far. It's a really interesting time because I think that we're going into a moment where the world was pretty much shut down for two years and the most like explosive social media platform ever came to massive popularity at the same time. You have, sure, artists like us who had a fan base and that fan base ostensibly has grown through the use of TikTok. I've enjoyed watching the socials grow. It's actually like a very gratifying experience. Does the change between having zero TikTok followers and having 350,000 followers, what does that mean in terms of ticket sales and all those things? Like it's, that actually is probably pretty hard to quantify. But for our fans, it probably is a very significant metric for them of like, look, they're blowing up. Our fans feel really legitimized in their fandom. I love my fans. <laughs> I get all the like 
the bass nerds, which, I mean, those are my people. When you go to a party and you're like, yeah, I'm in a band. For the first five years, everyone's like, oh, that's cool. And then slowly people are like, oh my God, that's like my friend's cousin's favorite band. And then it becomes, oh, I went to your show. And starting to see the like level of notoriety that we've gotten just grow over time has been really awesome. There's a pretty like innate human psychological thing with fame. There's certainly kind of like an ego boost, like confident, like sort of dopamine rush, like almost subconscious good feeling that comes from being recognized, feeling you know, famous. We're at this interesting level where in the context of our shows, the people there treat us like we're really famous and we get all the positive aspects of that. Like there will be a location where there are thousands of people. Every single person would want to talk to me and ask me for a picture and say super nice things to me, but it'd be very difficult for me to operate normally. And then I could walk two blocks away to a deli and get a sandwich and like literally no one would have any idea who I am. I mean, there's definitely a level of fame that we're certainly not at yet. That sounds like scary and maybe unpleasant, but I'd definitely be lying if I said that the whole concept of being famous didn't kind of interest me. This is going to be so cringy, but like I do, like walking down the street, <laughs> like hope someone's gonna recognize me. Yeah, but like I enjoy when people recognize me. And but you're not like, like, actively trying for people to recognize you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wear a sign. Right. One, two. All that I do, fuck yeah. He's not enough for you. some level you like want everyone's eyes to be on you and in that moment when the camera goes to you or the spotlight hits you for you to be like fucking ready for it. Jordan on the lights everybody lights to cool my whole zoo. Yeah. Our fans are awesome. Like yeah. they really don't overstep their bounds and they're all super cool people. And when I meet our fans, like they ask me really amazing questions about the music and they yeah. really they really want to hear what I have to say and they really respect the music and they respect our approach and, and I, that means a ton to me. So yeah. like, and those are things that come with being famous. So it's like, I feel that we are already famous to a very small group of people. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple here that like met over that song or something. Gee, what did you tell me before the show? He, he can't even hear me. Something it's, it's cool. Them. That song is dedicated to you. <laughs> I don't remember the full story, but it's awesome. So many of our fans got in at the ground level. And even when they arrive now, they feel like they're getting in at the ground level. I feel like people are just like passionate about it in a way that I so appreciate and am like really don't take for granted. It's We've been told like by oh, venue yeah. staff all the time. We have like the nicest fans. I can't stop. 
People think that bands like get wasted on stage all the time. We we pretty much never do that. This Houston show was an was, was an admiration <laughs> to that. Congrats, sure. guys. And we are all. Check the show. Check the show. Check the show.